Okay, it's a uh, park slide band, sort of time again. Now it's actually made quite a few cuts, as you can see from the amount of, uh, amount of shit that's, uh, that's on the base. Um, yes, creek door. Um, yes, it's made quite a few cuts. Um, it's done a reasonable job. Shut the fuck up, door. Um, but uh, the last cut I had to make was freehand, so I've had to take it off the base, which is here, this piece of junk. So it's time to make, time to start making uh, a few little modifications to it. First one is going to be to uh, to lose uh, to lose these these screws that go in here, Eesh. because uh, screwing in and out of Zamac all the time is going to end up with dead Zamac. Um, so they're going to get some little 6mm studs locked tighted in and then we'll bolt a bolt on the other side. That's going to be the first mod. Get on with that. So on to something a bit more interesting. Um, there is a problem also with the return wheel of the, of the, of the, of the blade. Um, the return wheel of the blade. The return wheel. The free wheel. This one. This one's. Uh, can you see that? No, you can't see that. So this is the uh, the non-driven wheel, um, and they are very flippy floppy. So, oh, thank you, motherfucker. Right. So blades off, and I don't know if you can hear that. There's an awful lot of flippity flop going on in there. So what we're going to do? Going to pop the wheel off. And we'll look at where the problem is. I think I already know where the problem is. That's not the right bloody anchor, is it? The problem is the tension mechanism. The whole thing is so slack. It's uh, it's beyond a joke there's there's a good millimeter of play there and the reason is that we have these screws here which are uh, can we see that uh, I don't know if we can get a focus on that can we get a focus on that are you going to focus I'm focusing on oh there we go yeah so we've got a little it's a little shouldered M4 bolt and uh, there's a little washer behind to try and take up some of the slack but that little washer is rubbish. Um, the thickness of that shoulder is... The thickness of the shoulder appears to be two millimetres. We'll double check. No, three millimetres. A three millimetre shoulder on there. And the metal is, if that's any more than two, I would be very surprised. Right, mods are made. We now have uh, little brass top hats in here, uh, which I had to take the edges off because they were impinging on the wheel. Um, instead of these shitty little shoulder nuts that, uh, that were allowing enormous amounts of slop. There is now zero slop in the uh, in the mechanism although it does still move this is good we are pleased with this so we've got some uh, some little m6 studs that are now loctited into the zamac so we're not going to bugger up the zamac and we'll just chuck some chuck some m6 uh, m6 wing nuts on the end of there they're a bit they're a bit gnarly but you know hey it is what it is it's a cheap tool, cheap solutions. So the next thing to do is to see whether the blade here is in line with this axis here. Uh, we know that it's not square with the jaws of the chuck, or with the jaws of the chuck, with the base of the chuck. And we know that it cuts more or less square. The question is whether it cuts square because the because the blade's deviating. Or whether it cuts square because the uh, because the blade is actually in line with this axis. I'm hoping 
that the blade is in line with this axis because uh, that would mean that I can actually just reuse this axis with a different support and put it on a new base and everything will be good and, good and funky. So we're going to have a look at that with the aid of a little toolmaker square. So my apologies for this, this is going to be very wibbly wobbly, there's no way of getting, uh, getting stuff in place. Actually let's, uh, let's move the light. Improve matters a bit. So there's no way of me doing this without doing it handhold, handhold, handheld. So what you can see is that here we're touching the square on the way up. Um, square sat on the on the vice. So we're pretty much touching the square there. We are touching the square there, and as we bring the blade up, there's a really good. Uh, refocus, kind of. Yeah, there's a good distance between the blade and the and the square at the top. So, what I'm going to do is jack up the arse end of the square until we get to a point where we're relatively close to the blade, and we'll see where we where we are there. Right. So, same old ropey setup. And what we can see here is that with the arse end of the, uh, of the square jacked up with standard packing materials number one and number two, Stanley knife blade and bit of hacksaw blade, um, we can actually get pretty much square all the way up. Now what that means to me is that although the blade is not square with the base of the vice, or indeed with the base of the base, it is square with the axis of rotation of this, uh, of, the, uh, of this arm, which means that I don't need to make a new arm. All I need to do is change the way that the arm is supported, put it onto something that is a bit more square, and we should be able to get square cuts.